Hello, this is Joseph. In today's screencast, we'll be going over how to initialize right and kind of build a select type of system where you have a drop down and you choose an option and it tells you what options you've picked. Really straightforward, really easy. But I'll go over a couple of um, issues that you'll run into when using right and going down this approach. Um, so first, a little premise, I'm running a local PHP server because using a CDN type of thing without having to download right itself requires some type of local server or some type of server to get around some of the web security issues that you have with just opening up a JavaScript or HTML file and, and ex including external uh, references to, to stuff. So first I'm going to include the write plus the compiler together because I'm not going to be compiling any of my components. I, I need the compiler so you make sure you download the write plus the compiler. You don't need the minified version but you can if you want. Um, so the next part I'm going to do is actually define my component. And this is done using the script tag. Now, I, I can include an external component, but I, I want to go ahead and just show you guys really simply how to do it internally. Show this on a previous uh, screencast as well as what is right. So I'm going to go ahead and type in right slash tag. And then I'm going to go ahead and define my custom tag, which will be lo and behold, my tag. So that'll be my tag. I kind of need to add it. And then I'm going to go ahead and do another script tag to initialize write itself. So write.mount my tag. Would help if I actually typed in valid. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and refresh my page. Nothing shows, obviously. Now I'm going to go ahead and type in hello world with my, my custom tag, and still nothing shows. Well, I kind of forgot something. I forgot to tell the page where this is going to show. I, I de defined it and I initialized it, but I didn't declare where it's going. So I'm going to go ahead and type in my tag, and now I get hello world. Now, when you're doing this, you're not having an external file, you still have to be careful on how your tag is defined. Because if I do something like I put this on a, over here and there's no space, I'm gonna go and compile error. And that's kind of because it, it's, it needs a space. The other part to this is that even after I fixed it, I still get an error and that's because at this point, because it's not simple, it doesn't know where script ends and where JavaScript or where your HTML continues. And because when you're doing this type of approach, you're not having a clear defined script tag, meaning that you can actually have like script, uh, if I type, if you had uh, the script tag in here, specifically defining where your JavaScript is, um, you're gonna run into all these little edge cases of not using it. And I do recommend putting this outside, um, but if you're just doing some quick example, you don't need to really uh, next to all thing, just understand that you're going to be running to certain edge cases. So in this scenario, every piece of text that you have always has to be wrapped in some type of tag. So I'm going to put this in a p tag. And if I go ahead and refresh, I now get hello world. Okay, great. Next part is, go ahead and let's start to put in um, what someone selected. So I can say, you've selected and then value. So if I go ahead and save this, you've selected but nothing shows yet. So let's go ahead and say this dot value equals nothing. And now I get nothing. Um, so just to understand that this context is the outside of the, the inner of your object. All of this that you're dealing with is inside your object. So you don't need to reference this here, but you still can do it if you want to. So now I still have the same thing, but you don't really need to do that. It kind of understands that it's the same scope. So with that understanding, let's go ahead and actually start to build a select. So I'm going to say select and inside of my select, I'm going to have an option. And here I'm going to pause. 
we kind of need some values to feed into to generate this select drop down thing. So let's go back to our mount tag or our mount statement and let's include the object. In a previous video, I showed how to kind of use attributes to pass in data, but for now, I'm just going to go ahead and use the mount and show you how to pass in data through mounting the tag. So I'm going to say value list and I'm going to put a key value pair using a regular JavaScript object. And here I'm going to have one. So that'll be the value. And then the text or the label that value will be one. This will be two. And this will be three. So then I'll have two, three. Let's get rid of that extra. And now we'll be basic looping in right. So we're going to have an each and that each will be now, just to be clear, you don't always need to include this stuff, but I, I tend to like to because my uh, my text editor gets whacked out when trying to do syntax highlighting and, and providing me autocomplete features and stuff. Um, and because I'm also inside of this thing, it's not really helping me out anyways right now. But just for sake, I, I like putting quotes around it anyways. And then it'll be um, the key comma value uh, and then in the actual um, object that you're passing in. So I'm going to say a value and then label in and then I'll say value list to match what I have here. Value list. Next, anything you define after this is going to be local to that loop. So I'm going to say value equals value because it's pulling from the value that I defined here and then inside my option I, I want to give it the, the text label stuff so I do that I save it I refresh it I get my select but nothing's inside of it and that's because the way that you pass in values through riot is prefixed with ops so I can't just say value list and value list here I actually need to say ops dot value list and this makes a little bit more sense when you're using this approach here because then you can directly correlate okay what what's being pulled in versus what do I actually want to use um, but for now just understand that any anything you're passing into your component it'll be referenced with ops so I go ahead and save this and refresh it now I get my my drop downs the next thing I want to do is when I change this go ahead and change nothing to what I've actually selected so let's go ahead and make a quick method. I'm going to say this dot changed equals function with the event. And another thing I need to do is um, the this context gets changed when you're putting in a, an event like this. Um, at least the scope of the function does. So you do the dirty trick that a lot of people do and say like cell for um, underscore this or something like that. Some some way to know that it's the parent. And you can say this, and then I'll reference everything with this. So this dot or self dot uh, value, which is referencing this piece here, equals e dot target dot value. And basically, this is just going to return the, uh, the the value that that you're being selected in this drop down here. So this is regular JavaScript. This has nothing to do with jQuery or any other type of library. I'm not doing anything special here. Um, so now if I go ahead and refresh when I choose two, nothing happens. Well, it doesn't happen because of another issue. Let me just double click, check this real quick. Um, I, I need to tell the, uh, the right system that, okay, I've actually need to trigger this when I when I select it. So it's not like there's some type of magic system here. You actually need to be explicit on how things are defined. So this select is then going to be on change. So if you if you've done events before and you've done them embedded inside of elements, it's, it's no different than this. So on change. And again you don't need to reference this, you can just type in changed. And now when I choose two and I choose three or I choose one, this gets selected. That's great. That's kind of what I want. But 
I'm not doing self that update. I mean, in previous video, I talked about you need to do it. You need to be explicit, blah, blah, blah. There's certain th certain methods here that will basically auto update the thing for you. If not, then you'd actually need to call self that update. And for the time being, I'll just go ahead and leave that there, self that update. Now, the other thing I want to do is include nothing as a default, like a, some type of please select a value or something like that. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to this and say that value would be nothing and say, please select a value, the comma. So now I refreshed it, but it's way down here. And this has nothing to do with write. This is actually a limitation of JavaScript. You can't have an unordered um, key object. It'll, it'll order the key object the way that JavaScript orders it. So what I actually need to do is kind of just redo this. Redo this in the sense that if I want to have um, uh, an array of, of objects, then I can go ahead and do that. So let me go ahead and just change this to array of, of objects. So I'm going to go ahead and put some curly braces here. And I'm going to say the value. Comma, uh, then the label. Actually, let's, let's fix a little bit of this. And that, I'm just going to fix this. Should have just put the end of line. Okay, so now I have um, value. So the value is one, and the label is the text. And if I go ahead and refresh this, it doesn't really break it, but now I just get zero, one, two, three. And this is just pulling from, so when you, when you reference key value and you still have the same setup here, you're actually getting the index of the array instead. So I'm gonna change this to index and I'm gonna change this to OBJ. So that'll be my object inside this array. And then I'm gonna say object.value and object.label. So when I refresh this, now I actually get the order that I want because it's an array that that order doesn't actually change. Now write does have um, a no reorder type of attribute that you can add to like a for each loop to not kind of reorder anything, but it doesn't apply to this scenario because the key value is still a JavaScript limitation. So let's keep that in mind. So now when we choose one or two or three, that table will change. Now, one other thing I want to show you is kind of okay, you've initialized this thing, you're getting data, how do you get data out? Like how, how do you know that something's changed? Like how do you interact with this new tag that you've created? Well, with that, you can either do observables or just use the raw mounted tag. For now, I'm just gonna do a quick and dirty raw mounted tag. So I'm gonna say my tag equals that. And so I'm gonna go ahead and select the value and the way that the mounted thing works is that you can have many tags. So if I go ahead and look at it, I see that I have an array in my console. I'm gonna say my tag zero dot select it. Actually it's not selected it's value, sorry. Value, I then get one. And if I change this, and then get two. Now, if you want to be automatically updated or um, get the value, then that's when you're going to fall into a observable. But if you did want to like, just change it, say, you know what, I, I want the value to be something completely different. You can do that, but then you have to remember to, because you're not firing off an event, you still have to update the component. So then you type in update. And now you get that value that you previously typed. Um, and that's basically it. I'll go over more on how to do certain things, moving this over into its own file, uh, using the observable system that Riot comes baked in with. Uh, but until then, hopefully this is a good start and gets you interested in how to use Riot.